everyone. My name is Suzanne and I'm the CEO and co-founder of NitroVolt. We make ammonia, which is the keystone to modern human society. Why? Well, we're about 13,000 attendees at Slush this year, and without commercial ammonia production, 6,000 of us would not be alive today. How come? Well, ammonia is one of the most important chemicals, and 80% of the production of it goes towards nitrogen-based fertilizer. So it supports 40 to 50% of the entire agricultural sector. So half the food we grow, the first step is ammonia production. Unfortunately, the leading producing and exporting countries for ammonia today is countries like Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, which we've seen recently has led to some geopolitical tensions, let's say. Um, and this, particularly the pandemic, and then followed by the invasion of Russia and Ukraine, has led to a tremendous increase in the price of nitrogen-based fertilizers. So two years ago, farmers suddenly had to pay four times what they used to pay for this critical input in their production. And that meant many farmers simply could not afford fertilizer, which meant less crops and therefore less foods. We've all felt that the price of food has gone up recently. So there is this dependency on geopolitical stability and supply chains that is a problem in the production of ammonia today. Now, ammonia is the second most produced chemical in the world, and I already said 80% of it goes towards fertilizer production. The remaining 20 goes to basically every single industry you can imagine. So that's things like pharmaceuticals, textile, beauty products, fuel, refrigeration, anything. And that's why it really underpins our modern human society. We would not be where we are today without ammonia production. And the current way we produce ammonia is via this thing called the Haber-Busch process. It's a high temperature, 400 degrees Celsius, high pressure, 200 bars process that occurs in these huge centralized facilities. And unfortunately, the inputs in these facilities are fossil fuels. So that means that today, ammonia production emits half a gigaton of CO2 every year. To put that into perspective, that's roughly the same as the entire aviation industry. This is a big problem. So the current way we produce ammonia emits a lot of CO2, and there's these geopolitical dependencies. We see these as pretty big problems. Fortunately, at NitroVolt, we have the solution. So through seven years of research at the Technical University of Denmark, we found a completely novel way to produce ammonia that takes air, water, and green electricity as the input in order to produce green ammonia. It's a room temperature process, low pressure, 10 bar process. So 10 bars is something you can get with your bike pump at home, not a really high pressure. And that means we can do it decentralized. So instead of these huge billion euro facilities, we can do it in a container, something that can be out at the farm, generating ammonia on demand to be used as a fertilizer. And we see that the green ammonia generated, if the electricity supplied is renewable and on site, is actually competitive with the gray ammonia that the farmers are using today. So if we just consider the nitrogenous fertilizer market, it's around a $72 billion market. Europe today sits on around 12 billion of that, and we import 3 billion every year. So this is where ammonia can really, this is where NitroVolt can really shine, because we can make local production possible. Instead of buying from countries like Russia and China, we can produce in Europe ourselves. And we see we have many farmers who are very, very excited by this prospect of resiliency to these price fluctuations. They want to be able to produce themselves. They see the unique selling point, not necessarily in the sustainable aspect, but in being able to control the production themselves. In this day and climate, not being dependent on whether or not there's another war or potentially another pandemic is a pretty big deal. Now, 
In the team, it's myself and my co-founder, Mattia. So I've worked on this for seven years. Mattia has worked on it for five. And we have a fantastic team of eight other Nitro employees. We're looking to expand the team. We're looking for people on the executive team that have actually scaled a startup to a scale up and beyond. Um, so if you know anyone, please let me know. We have fantastic advisors, both locally in Denmark, so we're a Danish company, but also globally through the Breakthrough Energy Fellowship. And as late as last week, we announced closing our seed round. So we just raised three and a half million to actually make this container come true. So I wanted to also go through our journey a little bit. This is something that started in my PhD project back in 2017, where the goal was to find a method that worked. How can we electrify this process? And I had a little beaker, as you can see, it's not unlike a coffee cup, and I was making micrograms of ammonia. But it actually worked. And if you have something that works, it's really just an engineering challenge to make it work better. So we hired a lot of PhDs and postdocs to work on this, and we published a lot of very nice high-impact papers and uh, high-impact journals. And we also got some patents along the way. And about two to three years ago, I thought to myself, well, the whole reason I did this PhD was to have impact. So I turned to my co-founder and asked him, hey, like, do you want to do this startup with me? And he said, yes, luckily. And since then, we've then scaled our little, the first cell we had was about this big. Now it's about this big. Um, for commercial purposes, we need it to be this big. So we're almost there. And then we've also actually just made the world's first electrochemical stack, um, which is so new that I don't even have a picture of it in this presentation because I made this presentation three weeks ago. But we have the world's first stack, and it works. So the next step with this seed round uh, is to build the first container. We want to actually get a 10-foot container, be able to produce just five kilos of ammonia, green ammonia, from air, water, and green electricity, and place it on a farm to produce ammonia for a farmer that he, can, he because it's cast, can use it as a fertilizer. So we, right now, have the proof of concept. We have research. We have closed our seed round as of last week. We've set up our own labs. If you're ever in Denmark, I welcome you to reach out if you'd like to see what this actually looks like. We've done IP negotiation with the university. We're starting pilot unit production. We have a go-to-market strategy. We have farmers who are telling us, yes, when can you come and give us these units? And we're securing LOIs and MOUs and pre-purchase agreements. So with the seed round, we want to build this first unit I just talked about, actually a green container and get it out in the real world, not just in a lab setting. And we want to build and test this in the real world. See, you know, if you're using water from rain or if you're using water from another source, how does it actually impact the performance of this? We want to patent, do patent protection. So if there's any patent attorneys, IP strategists out there, I would love to talk to you. <laughs> Please reach out. Uh, and we would like to close these pre-purchase agreements because our next step is to raise a Series A based on the demo unit that we're building over the next two years. And for that, as I mentioned, we're expanding the executive team. So again, if you know a phenomenal COO head of business, please let me know. Um, and then secure the next purchase agreements for the Series B and beyond. We intend to start in Denmark because we are a Danish-based company. Then we want to expand in the EU. And then we want to go global because this can have significant impact, not just in the EU by giving us resiliency, but we can also expand new markets. We can go to places that the incumbent centralized produced ammonia cannot go to because the logistics and distribution costs are simply too expensive. So here I'm talking about landlocked countries in Africa. We're talking about remote regions in South America, even rural Canada. There are some places there that's too expensive to distribute fertilizer. You might not know this, but Africa as a continent sits on around 60% of the world's arable land, but they only produce 4% of the world's food. That is a big market opportunity. So thank you for your attention. If you know anything ab about ammonia, if you know anyone who would be interested in ammonia, please reach out. We love talking about ammonia. Yes. Thank you.